Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a day three of my Alaskan cruise, and we're gonna explore the historical city Ketchikan. The weather here is surprisingly sunny and dry. The weather is a little breezy, and the temperature is 50 to 70 ish Fahrenheit. It has a beautiful landscaping as you can see here, and certainly Ketchikan is a very popular port to attract tourists. Today, the cruise ship arrived here at 7 a.m., and we're gonna leave this port around 5 p.m., so we have approximately 10 hours of the free time for the excursions. And here is the bald eagle that I accidentally captured for the character encounter. Before I came here, I'm ready to wear this down jacket, but because of that global warming and nice weather, I ended up with this uh, sweater. With this weather, you can survive with short tees. Right next to the exit of the cruise ship, there are a lot of souvenir stores. And of course, there are many booths selling the excursion tickets. Believe it or not, Alaskan Cruise actually offered the most abundant excursion choices because of all the glaciers, landscaping, and wildlife given by the Mother Nature. In each of the Ketchikan, Juneau, and Skagway, there are more than 40 options of the excursion choices. And all of the popular options are fully booked approximately two months ahead of the ship time, so it's crazy. And here's what I found out. So for the same options or same tourism line, the price of the booth is actually cheaper than that's offered by the Princess Cruise Line. So for example, for the combination tour of the Saxman Totem Park and the city tour, the Princess Cruise Line charged approximately $100 per person, but we end up with $75 US dollars, so it's a 25% cheaper for the exact same value and the tour. Also, the Princess Cruise Line charged each kid at $50 for this city tour versus the booth salesman told us kids can travel for free. So that's another big difference here. So we decided to go with the booth tour line and we had the local tour guide from the native Indian descendant to guide us through the city tour as well as um, native village and Saxman Totem Park. And this whole tour is 3 hours in length and cost us 150 US dollars for our entire family. Facing the port is the frontier of the Ketchikan, which is a historical city for the gold rush, rising in the late 19th century. Because of the strong sunlight, we prepare each other the sunglasses, which is a must-have, and here is the photo that we took in the Totem Park. In this tour, our tour guide is from the local native Indian descendant, and he will walk us through all this interesting history and all those uh, stories behind the scene. This interesting craft is a drum made of the animal skins. And the animal totem here represents certain tribe of the Indian native village. Wow. It's the most ferocious. This little guy standing on his hind legs about the same, about up to your hips on all, on standing on his hind legs. But this little guy is ferocious. He will actually take on a 1,200 pound brown bear. And that brown bear will not fight this little guy. Why? Because this little guy is three times faster. And when he runs up the back of that brown bear, he'll rip and tear at the eyes of that brown bear. And the brown bear knows us, so he'll walk away without an argument. Then you got a wolf, a timber wolf, very powerful jaws, and they run in packs. There's a female that's in charge of that pack. For you ladies, make a fist, and you'll see that his paw is the same size as your fist, or just a little bit bigger. But they run in packs. And there's a female that's in charge of that pack. When they're chasing their prey, which is the Sitka black tailed deer, there'll be one on the left, one on the right, and one in the center. They will chase that deer down until that deer is exhausted to the point where it can't run fast anymore. So the one in the back, when it catches up with that deer, it goes to that back leg, breaking that leg, 
crimping that deer. When that deer goes down, that's when the wolf on the left, the wolf on the right will go after that, rip and tear the throat out, killing that deer. That's when the female, she'll come out of the brush to get her fill. Once she's got her fill, she'll go lay down and observe her pack to go out of the rest of that deer. Then you got to uh, stand with two glass showcases. You don't have that, you'll see chipmunks and squirrels. Now you cannot say, you did not see a black bear in my tree. You got one right here. <laughs> this one just happens to be posing for you. So take lots of pictures. Take pictures of everything. So when you go back home and show family or friends that did not go on a vacation like that, say, see what I saw in Ketchikan? Yeah. Right. You see my tour guide? No. <laughs> okay, on this wall, you'll see mallard, mallard duck. Very good eating. Better than the Cornish game hen, in my opinion. Then you got the Canadian goose or the Canadian hawk, which is a migratory bird. They started showing up here in April. And we'll head back south in October. Then on the wall, you'll see our venison, our typical black tail deer. Uh, we're only allowed to hunt three bucks. Our hunting season starts will start on August 1st and end December 31st. We are not allowed to hunt the doe. They are protected. That's it. Ladies, rights and hindrance. Now these are my people. The Chamogas, the Chimpian. My mom came from the Raven Cross House, so that's why you see Raven Cross. Then you got the eagle. Then you got the blackfish. Now you folks refer to the blackfish as orc at the tailwheel, but throughout my tour you hear me say blackfish. Then you got the brown bear. This represents my great great grandfather. 35 years ago I learned that he was of the brown bear in old Mount Catlin, British Columbia. And he was actually a chief, so that might have already passed on down to me. But we're no longer called chief, we're called tribal leaders. Then you got the wolf. Then you got the sun. Now in front, you'll see the Canadian flag. Why the Canadian flag? Because that is where our ancestors originated from, British Columbia. Then you see Raven Frog. Now on the right hand side, you'll see the eagle. Any questions? So each generation, the totem is different? I'm sorry? So each generation, the uh, the sign or the totem is different, right? Because your your father is different from yours, so my great grandfather. Great grandfather is different from yours. Mom. Yeah. Who is Raven Frog? Yeah. Surprisingly, the gasoline price here is a little bit more expensive than where I live in the east coast of the United States. Here is a very popular photo point for this historical town with the famous Married Man's Trail. I was told that here is actually the point where the glaciers or snows from the mountain melts into the fresh water. Also, passing this point, the local salmon will become bigger but the texture of the meat will be less tasty than those weighing less than 40 pounds. Moving on, we'll see a lot of state parks and Indian native village. Here, this breathtaking scenery presents you the Dixon entrance, which is 50 miles long and wide, located in the Pacific Ocean between the border of you United States know, and Canada. Now we are in the Saxman native village and the Totem Park. Again, another popular photo point and look at our tour guide. He is fully geared up and I believe that the helmet he's wearing is from the real wolf skin. Young man is my nephew. 
He's in his early 30s. He started way too late. Normally, our car, those that want to learn how to carve will start with the master carve when they're about eight. That black figure is the mud shark. Then you'll see the wolf. In the wolf's paw, you'll see what's known as the copper shield for a tenon shell. T E N N A H. Tenon. Now, on this tenon, there's some inscription. At the top, it says the memory of Evans, Chief of the Tongans, January 11, 1892. Notice that figure upside down. That figure upside down tells me that this is a figure from the deck of the chief ever repaid that debt, so therefore he was carved upside down. And lastly, down below the ground. Now let me tell you how our ancestors made their pigment paint. Black came from the charcoal from the firewood. The pale green comes from the mineral called copper oxide. The rusty red, another mineral, which is iron oxide. Now, one piece of fuel from gathered that they were pulverizing as part of some of the women from the other villages with a small chunks of lake from the family. Putting those chunks of lake. <laughs> Should I ask a question? <laughs> 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 That's what that animal gets his strength, his power was getting his tail. And in between the ears of the beaver, you'll see the face of the oldest brother. The next pole is the shaman pole, and the shaman is the medicine of the beaver. He is the doctor, he is the one that made everybody go. Up on top of the beaver alley, just below the alley, you'll see the face of the principal shaman, and down below you'll see the spirit and the face of the beaver. And in between the ears of the beaver, you'll see the face of the shaman. And today, too, the doctor, we have started to get the next one, go to the right wing and the beak of the eagle is missing. It broke. Anytime any item falls off, that item is packed off into the post to let you turn back to you. The next thing down below is the wolf. Just below that wolf is the two cave eagles. Two cave eagles down there. That note is in between the ears of that first one where you see that two turn colored face. That two tone from the face tells me that this individual has had a violent death because he was killed by the bounder. And behind me, you see the beaver canoe. On the front of that beaver canoe, you see the little part of the beaver in the mirror, which is the sign of the beaver. Right above the entrance, you see the large part of the city. And on your far right and your far left, you see at the corner of that canoe, you see that five past there. At the top of the steps on your left hand side, you will see Moon Raven. Moon Raven is led to the bounder. How you expect to go in the cat? That's right, The next, uh, keep in mind, I told you that back in March 30th, of 1867, that the territory of Alaska was purchased from Russia for 7.2 million dollars. Do they pay the second of the state under the country? Is it going to turn up this part? And as the candidate, I would say, we said that that was going to be the moment of the taxpayers. Now, the chief of the chief of the nation of Alaska was Chief Evans. Now, Chief Evans knew that two of them I went to the American Park with the nine of them and big foundation for the park. Just to give you an idea what a park I can say that the song is to be good in the middle. She is the one that has a song and that's a big song in the middle. The first two years, the gathering, 
This totem park is actually a little bit smaller than I expected. But hey, with all due respect, I do think this place has a lot of interesting plants and history. It's worth visiting and I recommend it. Here, interestingly, the way this totem is cut in half is to preserve its lifespan to 10 times longer. And I learned that the berry here is somewhat different from that in the mainland US. Behind this totem, there are several tombstones representing the famous figures of this history. The infamous Creek Street now becomes restaurants and souvenir stores. As you know, Ketchikan is the second largest port city in Alaska. From May to September is a high time for tourism. Other than that, the rest of nine months, people here have to find multiple jobs in order to make ends meet. This Ketchikan port is a must-have for almost all the popular mega cruise line. This port can host seven cruise boats on a daily basis. For every cruise, they come here in the early morning and leaves in the late afternoon. In May, the sunrise here pretty much happens around 5 a.m. and the sunset is only until 10 p.m. So we pretty much enjoy the super long daylight. At this point, the catch can time is only 3 hours behind that of the East Standard Time. But when we go to the next destination, Juno, then the time difference is 4 hours apart. So this impresses us how big Alaska spreads out. We're lucky on one hand that the weather here is nice and warm. But on the other hand, I do feel bad about the impact of global warming on Alaska. The temperature here on average is at least 10 degrees Fahrenheit higher than I expected. That's why people can still enjoy the top deck outdoor swimming pool. This is pretty much it for my tour in Ketchikan. I'll see you guys next time in my next stop at Juneau, Alaska.